Well, hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Alan Barrett. I'm from Afrinic. And um, yeah, we're one of the sponsors. We like to support regional mobs. Um, I've been, I was asked or invited to speak to you about changes to the internet review registry system. So, um, there we are. I'm going to give you an academic perspective on routing registries, and um, I'm going to pay particular attention to some recent changes which have happened um, in both in the uh, right ACT routing registry and also changes which are planned in the AFRINET routing registry and um, how AFRINET members or internet operators in Africa can deal with the changes. Okay, uh, so what, what is a routing registry? It's a database where network operators can register information about their routing policy. So we say things like, um, this route can be originated by this ASN, or um, this ASN peers with these other ASN, or um, when we peer with this other ASN, here's our routing policy, the filters that we're going to impose. You can register those kinds of things in the routing registry. And there are tools which can automatically create the filters to help you configure your routers based on what's in the routing registry. So there are several organizations around the world that maintain routing registries. Um, Afrin is just one of them. All five of the regional internet registries have uh, routing registries as well. Um, the very first routing registry started in the late 90s was the uh, RADB, the Routing Arbiter Database. And uh, they're still around. There are several others, and um, there's a large degree of compatibility. They all use the, the same kind of um, policy description language called RPSL. And um, also, many of them mirror each other. So, in the diagram here, don't pay too much attention to the detail, but um, essentially, uh, AFRINIC has our routing registry, and uh, there's some front ends through a web interface and an email robot interface and uh, it's mirrored by several other routing registries around the world. So then what's in the routing registry? Um, it, it's all this information I was talking about. In Afrinix case, we use the same underlying database for both the Google service and the routing registry service. And so um, I'm not going to go into detail about exactly what's in the registry. Uh, but we will have a tutorial this afternoon. Uh, Afrinix staff, Hostmaster staff, uh, will be running a routing registry tutorial in the other room uh, late this afternoon. Um, but here's a, a slide showing a few of the objects you might find in the routing registry. Um, a root object basically says this route can be originated by this ASN. And for IPv6, it's the same thing as for the root 6 object. If this IPv6 root can be originated by this ASN. Um, the root objects tend to be linked to the objects which I uh, say which organization has the, the address. So um, the, the root objects, they use going to originate the root. And not shown in the diagram, is, um, there'll also be information about the organization. Uh, the admin contact, the tech contact. Um, autonomous system objects um, specify the, the AS number and uh, do I have a pointer? Yes. Um, okay, so what, an autonomous object talks about an autonomous system and the import and export attributes are optional things where you can describe your policy for how you filter routes, your peering um, arrangements. Um, so INET nums will have which organization is responsible for the address space. The root object says which ASN announces the root, the, the address space. And the ORT num object says um, information about the peering and um, the filtering that that 
autonomous system will do. And then uh, something which is going to be very important in dealing with the changes is the maintainer object. Um, all the other objects are linked to maintain. So here you can see a root set object is maintained by example one MET. And then in example one MET, we say authentication can be used, done using a password. So every object is linked to one or more maintainers. The maintainers have permission to create the object or to edit the object. Um, sometimes they're multiple maintainers, an INIC num object, typically it's maintained by the African Postmaster, but MET lower says who can create more specifics, and MET roots says who can create or update the root objects that go with the same IP address or the more specifics. Afrinex Routing Registry is a free service open to Afrinex members. Um, essentially, you have to have IP address space which has been assigned or allocated through Afrinex, and then you can use it. Um, it's, it's been reliable. Since we introduced it in 2013, there's been zero downtime of, of the query side. Uh, there have been times when you haven't been able to update. But on the query side, there's been zero downtime. Um, Prior to 2013, uh, network operators in Africa were encouraged to use the RIPE routing registry. And they did that a lot. Uh, more than 1,000 African members have created more than 48,000 root objects and root 6 objects in the RIPE routing registry. Um, so since we launched the, the routing registry, the Afrinet routing registry, we've been encouraging our Afrinet members to use it, and uh, we can help members to migrate your objects. So if you have information, root objects, root six objects in another routing registry, Afrinet can help you to migrate that to the Afrinet routing registry. Uh, we, we do that through tutorials. We can have one-on-one -on -one sessions where we take you through the process. You can send us email asking for help. Um, the uptake has been a little less than we hoped, uh, but it's picked up very much recently. Um, as of Thursday last week, about 32% of the Afrinic members have information stored in the Afrinic routing registry. And that's up by 10% from a month ago. So we jumped in the past month from 23% up to 32%. And uh, we, we'd like to see it above 50% uh, within the next year. And I think we can go above that because um, if you look at the number of members with roots in the right registry, it's more than 1,000, um, which constitutes more than 50%. I think it's about 60% of the academic membership have roots in the right routing registry. We'd like them all to use the academic routing registry. Um, this graph shows the number of roots. And um, look at that enormous jump in the last month. It's been fairly flat for, for most of 2017. Um, picked up slowly since about May, June this year, and that's when we started announcing that some changes were coming in the right registry. And then sudden jump the day after right made their changes. Um, so what has right done? What were the changes? In the past, the right routing registry was open to everybody. Anybody could register things in the right registry. Um, it didn't matter if you were a right member or not. It didn't matter which RR your address space came from. You could use the right routing registry. And um, there was a special maintainer with a, a well-known password. So updating things in the routing registry is supposed to be password protected, but there was a special password that anybody could find out. Um, and they, in 2017, they decided to change that. They're um, removing access to the shared password. They're removing permission to register 
address space which doesn't come from right. But they're not deleting the existing information. You already had information in the right registry, but it's with AfriMake address space, then you're not allowed to change it. Right made this change about a month ago on the 4th of September. You're not allowed to change it, but it will stay there, but they're going to flag it as non-authoritative. One of the fields in every root object is the origin. And they're changing things from origin is right to origin is right non-auth. And um, that's going to affect academic members. So, how, how many academic members are affected? Um, these charts, which you probably can't read due to the uh, small font and the, the low contrasting colors, but uh, these charts show that more than 1,000 AFRINIC resource holders have created more than 48,000 objects in the right Ruby registry. And uh, the chart on the right shows the distribution by color. And um, highest is South Africa, followed by Nigeria, Kenza, Kenya, and uh, Tanzania. So East Africa is definitely um, making heavy use of the right Ruby registry. How is this going to impact us? Well, um, if you had roots registered in the right registry, they're going to change them. Sorry, they have already changed it from source equals right to source equals right non walk. And um, if your upstream provider or your peers uses the root registry to create filters, then they might not recognize source equals right non worth and it might be dropped from their filters. And that might mean that your roots are no longer accepted. And I know this caused a problem for some African members the day after I made the changes. Um, African staff were very busy helping um, some of our members to, to register roots in the African database. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed to say that we had a technical problem that day. And uh, if your roots had a non AFRINIC AS number, but AFRINIC address space, things weren't working. And it took us the whole day to fix it. It's fixed now, but it was very embarrassing. I'm sorry. Um, so, what should you do? Please. Um, if you have roots in the right registry for AFRINIC address space, you might be okay in the short term because they're still there in the right database, it's just that the origin tag has been changed. You might be okay in the short term, but in the long term, you won't be able to edit those objects, and so we do encourage you to move them to the AFRINIC routing registry. Uh, or, of course, you can choose some other routing registry. The AFRINIC registry is a free service for members, um, but you, you can also use one of the paid routing registries. So if you discover that your peers or your upstreams don't accept routes from the AFRINIC registry, please ask them to make that little configuration change. The AFRINIC routing registry uses the same query protocols as all the others, um, and also is mirrored by several of the others. So if you know of a provider or a peer that doesn't use the academic region registry, ask them. It's a small configuration change for them, and Africa can help you as well. If you're having trouble um, explaining things or persuading your upstream to change, Africa will help you. Just send us an email uh, to IRR at AfriNet.net. Um, if you're one of those upstream providers, who builds your filters using routing registry information, please make sure that you accept information from the AFRINIC routing registry, and you can encourage your customers to register their routes in the AFRINIC routing registry. Um, also, I suggest that you accept the right non auth origin, because that's going to help your customers in the short term. All right, so I've been talking a lot about um, encouraging you to use the academic routing registry. How do you actually do that? Well, it's a free service for holders of address space or legacy space um, in the academic region. Um, 
And if you send updates through the web form on the, the who is service. So AppNX who is service is not only for lookups, it's also for updates. You can use the web form to send updates. There's also an email robot um, for auto DBM at AppNX.net. Uh, we've got a web page for documentation. Um, if you go to the um, AfriNet services um, web page, you can download a, a comprehensive guide to how to use the Ruby registry. And it'll describe how things are today. Um, now, how are things today? As of now, today, when, if you have a, a root object or if you want to create a root object with AfriNet address space, but a non afrinet autonomous system, uh, then it's a little complicated. Um, we have a system called dual authentication, where basically you send the same update twice. First, with a password that's associated with the maintainer of the IP address space, and again, with a password or a crypto key that's associated with the maintainer of the autonomous system. You've got to send the same information twice. Um, and in between the first time and the second time, it's stored in a holding area. So you have one week um, in between sending the first password and sending the second password. And if you don't, then it gets uh, expired. And if you do send both passwords, then it gets moved to the live database. Um, now, we've heard that people find this pain, and we will be changing it very soon. I'll get to that later. Um, if you have an out of region ASN, so I've just been talking about if the ASN and the IP address belong to different organizations in the AFRINIC region. But what if one of them is out of region? Let's say you have a, an AS number that, that came from the right region, but you have an IP address that come from the AFRINIC region. As of today, you need postmaster intervention. So the same dual authentication scheme that I've been talking about, where you send the update twice with two passwords, it still happens like that, except one of the passwords comes from the AfriNet Postmaster. And they'll only do that if they can verify that the autonomous system really does belong to the correct organization trying to do the update. And um, if, if um, they fail that authentication check, then the postmaster staff will not authorize the update. So, yes, it's a pain. But the pain will be quite short lived. Later this week, on Thursday, we're planning to deploy a new version of the server code, which will remove the need for the dual authentication. So, um, essentially, the objects will need to be authenticated only by the holder of the IP address. The V4 or the V6 address space must be associated with the maintainer who has a password that can be used to create the root objects. And we no longer care where the AS number came from. Well, we verify that it's a real AS, that it's not unallocated or reserved or something. But we don't care whether it belongs to the same organization. Uh, we don't care whether it's acronym AS number or an AS number from some other so those changes are coming on Thursday this week. Um, that should make things easier for most of our members, but there's still a small issue with um, the case where the AS number is trying to send the update, but the address space belongs to a downstream customer. You're going to have to get your customer to send the update using the password associated with the address space. So you're about to see with the AS, your customer um, delegates that um, control over the routes to you as the blockchain provider, but you don't have the password, the customer has the password. So you have to work it out with them, get them to send the update. Um, it's also possible for the customer who has the address space to add an MNT routes attribute to the address space to authorize the AS in. Um, to uh, 
control the new charge. Um, there's also another problem where you're trying to create an aggregate root. If the root aggregate is less specific and doesn't match the more specific which are inside the aggregate, unfortunately, the, the uh, authorization is not going to work. And uh, we don't yet have a plan to deal with this. Okay, so, Mark Elkins is listening on the screen. Yes, I know about the problem. Uh, we don't have a plan to deal with it, but we'll try. Okay, so um, we like to be engaged with the community. We run a mailing list called the African Database Working Group where you can discuss these changes. Um, the, the idea of removing the AS number dual authentication was discussed in the database working group. You can subscribe, it's an open mailing list. Um, we've got a web page where we talk about the IRR and you can send email to academic staff for help, an IRR at academic government. Also, we're running a tutorial here at SACMAR this afternoon in the room down there. Okay, thank you. Um, I didn't quite manage to finish by 10 as I was supposed to, but um, are there any questions? Yeah, uh, Simon, my name is Simon. I think you asked a lot of my questions, uh, which I thought you just need to clarify. Uh, the outage that you mentioned uh, and the Zeta issue, were we only based on the fact that uh, one AS, maybe the, the AS is from one region and then the prefix is from Africa? That was the only outage that we experienced. Or um, it was also due to the switch value, right? That's the other thing. Um, the, the two issues are related. The, on, on the Afrinic side, we have a problem with the uh, authentication for out of region ASM. Um, you, I, I, Try to explain that if the IP address space and the AS number are certainly different organizations that have different maintainers, then we have the scheme for dual authentication where we have to send the same thing, the same update twice with different passwords. In the case of the ASN is out of region, non academic ASN but academic address space, then what's supposed to happen today is the address space holder sends the root object and um, most master staff get a notification that you try to create a root object with another region ASM, and host master staff are meant to then deal with it. That notification process didn't work for a day, and um, it took us basically the whole day to figure it out. And, fix. and that affected, um, I know, one large member who had um, non African ASM but African ASM. I'm not sure if that answers it. Yeah, I think we have it because I think one of the issues is how about that go into uh, purchase them. Uh, after the share, do we talk to the one for the uh, Mofi or the Mofi? Of course, after notifying the, the other characters, they actually only for time once. Um, however, after the switch, they're going to then again tell them now and I'll try to query. Athletic IRR and then they responded. We saw like spiky traffic. You're wondering what was the market to the outlet or you're wondering uh, something could be done and uh, maybe what I should be put to that situation with future speech at the Right, so yes, the provider is not querying the athletic IRR, then they're not going to pick up this information and that could definitely be a problem. Um, I was aware of one large provider uh, 
six months or a year ago that did not use the app in my life, but they use it now. Um, I'm not aware of any others, but if you're aware of some, like if, if your ice cream is not perfectly active in our life, please tell that friend about it and we'll contact them and we'll explain to them how they can start clearing the active in our life. Okay, so that goes to the next question. Um, so, how many actually provide as many ice creams as you such ways? I think it takes place when this is probably probably by uh, getting in touch with most of the Big up the ass to tell them to quit because this thing comes back. Um, our use case was uh, notify them like a uh, month before of the suit in September and then reminded them that a week later. Then, after the speech, a week later, they still not have. It looks like they don't think happening to be one of the IRIs or maybe it's a person about us so that happening to take less credibility. <laughs> So probably after these uh, bigger players, the likes of the uh, uh, yeah, century of lights, so that they, they include the impact of the IRS and also some of the exit points that you do such as this. Okay. Um, we, we don't have a list of, of everybody who uses the IRR, of course, um, but we could make some guesses by. Um, you know, looking at the list of, of the big players around the world. Um, and so, yes, I'll, I'll take your suggestion if you kind of can't take it. Thank you. Um, Hi there, uh, my name is Michal. Um, and I'm going to say thank you for the work that your team has done to uh, try to modify the IRR. Uh, it's an essential part of what operators need to run their networks. Certainly, what the people just do, but should be using uh, as part of building their RAM policies. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you for that. Um, I have a question. I have a long, outstanding ticket for your team. Um, which I am not getting traction on, and while it might be out of place for us to do that, I'd like for us to do that. Right? Um, for, for people that are moving towards using RPKI, the there is a, an easier way to get out of this place. If we're authenticating ourselves to our API system, we should be able to create a roller which automatically creates a lot of it and just makes it easier for everybody. Uh, this should not be a difficult thing to do, but it is very difficult getting an answer out of your um, anonymous type of this. Uh, I guess your admin service manager for uh, whatever it is. Uh, so please, if you could just move the right people in the right place, it would make life smooth for myself and a whole lot of other people on the continent who are not about these. Yeah, um, thanks, Michelle. I am aware of that. And there is some related issues. Um, people want to be able to manage their um, routing objects through the MyAfrin portal. Uh, we don't have that. Um, people want to have uh, RESTful interfaces for updates and queries. Uh, we don't have that. Um, and people want to automatically create routing objects from rowers. We don't have that. Um, and also, we don't have uh, timelines for when we're going to get it. But they're certainly on our radar somewhere. So I'm sorry, I can't give you um, time to do this. Thank you.